So today we are going to start working on our Photoshop world. So here I am in classwork and I'm looking at the project topic which says Photoshop world and inside of it are a few different documents. The checklist is there. That's not something that we really need to worry about today. Um, there is a slide and this shows you the image that we should have saved off the internet and then what we're working towards. We're working towards trying to create a really interesting image still allowing that PS to be um, legible or noticeable within our artwork. And um, here's another student example that I really liked because there was a strong foreground, this area in front of, and then there is a nice background here. Okay, So in order to understand what I'm supposed to do, I need to open up the directions. And here they are. And I have to start with step one, erasing the light blue area. So the first thing I need to do is I need to know how to open up my project. So I have to open Photoshop and then open last name PS, which is the file that we worked on last class. And then as soon as we open it, we want to do a save as and we want to name it review. So review. And we're changing our format to PS. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm doing file open. I'm navigating to my folder, which is desktop. And then I find my folder to open and mine is Feral PS and I press open. As soon as I open it, I need to save it. So I'm going to do file save as and I am renaming it review. And I'm doing a capital R between my last name so that now I know, okay, it's Feral and then review and I'm getting out of JPEG and I'm going to Photoshop a PSD document and I'm pressing save. And up here I can see that my file has been changed to feralreview.psd. Now what I need to do is in the layers menu I need to click on my background layer to unlock it and then I'm going to name it logo. So over here I'm double clicking to unlock it and I'm going to name it logo. And you'll notice over here the lock is gone and now the layer is called logo. Then it says go to your toolbar and find your magic eraser tool. In your image click on the P, the S, and the blue border. So my magic eraser tool is hidden behind my eraser. I can press E on my keyboard to quickly select the eraser tool and then I'm going to press and hold to get the magic to pop out. So over here is my toolbar. This is the eraser. Watch. When I press E, it becomes highlighted. Now, I want to make sure that I'm working with magic. So again, I'm pressing and holding with my mouse to get this menu to pop out, and I'm clicking Magic Eraser. I'm going to click once on this blue border. I'm going to click once on the P and the S. So I'm getting rid of all the light blue. So it says erasing the light blue. So I did that. Now... I need to change the color of the dark blue. So I need to select the lower logo layer in the layers menu. I need to find my magic wand by pressing W. This is what it looks like. And then click on the dark blue area of the logo. I'm going to see marching ants. So I'm clicking W. And you see up here it highlights it. I'm pressing and holding to make sure that is the magic wand. And now I'm clicking all of the dark blue area. I didn't get this area selected, so I'm going to press and hold the shift key. You should see a plus sign appear next to my magic wand. And I'm pressing and holding the shift key still to also click in there. And now the magic wand is going, or I'm sorry, the marching ants are going all around the dark blue. So select the magic wand, dark blue area, I see marching ants. Now I need to use the paint bucket tool, which is the letter G, and I'm going to paint this area white. So I need to click G. There's my paint bucket tool. For some of you, it might be a gradient, so make sure that you find it. And I need to come down here and double click on my color picker. And I'm taking this circle here and dragging it all the way over to the white. And you'll see my little paint bucket, and I'm going to dump and dump. And now I have all of it as white. In order to get rid of the marching ants, it's called deselect or control D on my computer's keyboard. Hold Control D on the keyboard to deselect. It repeat these steps for the dark blue area inside the P. We already did that, so we don't need to. So this is what our file should look like. Now we're going to work towards creating a, uh, an image that looks like this. 
adding a gradient to the background. Create a new layer by going to Layer New Layer on the menu bar. Name this layer Gradient. In the Layers menu, drag the gradient layer below the logo layer. Select the gradient from the toolbar and pick two colors that we would like to work with. Click and drag this over. And that's as far as we need to get today. So I'm going to click here to change to my gradient tool. And down here are my color picker windows. So I'm going to choose a dark blue. And then I'm clicking on the lower square and I'm going to choose a lighter blue. And looking here, I see a dark and a light blue. And you'll also notice on the top here, this matches. If I press and hold this down, it shows me a lot of different options that I can do. These are kind of custom defaults here. And, I'm sorry, just regular defaults here. And then this is custom. Okay, this is what I've made. So if I change this, let's say to green, you'll notice up here that it changes as well. So I'm going to make this blue. And I'm going to, these are all the different gradients that I can do. So this one is called linear because it creates like a line. This one's radical because it's like a sphere in the center. This one's pretty harsh. This one goes dark, light, dark. And this one is like a diamond or a star. So each one is a little bit different. For this project, we're going to use this one. You can, of course, experiment with all of these and see what you like. So I need to make sure that I'm doing a layer, new layer, and I'm naming it gradient. Oops, I spelled it completely wrong. Hold on. So since I spelt it, I need to go back here and do it again. G-R-A-D-I-E-N-T. And there's the gradient. And when I click and drag long, it does a soft gradual change. Okay? And you'll notice that this is on top of the logo layer, which means it's covering it up. If I press and hold the gradient and drag it below, it goes behind. With the gradient, I could do, I'm going to turn off by using the eyeball this for a second. If I do it short, do you see how it's more harsh? And I can have it go in any direction that I want. I'm going to have it click and drag so it's nice straight down. And there it is. That's as far as we're going today. That's a savior work, okay? Um, where is this logo going to exist? You can start thinking about where do you want to create your work? Do you want it to be in outer space, underwater, a new world? You must make sure that you include a strong foreground, middle ground, and background in your work. So since I'm done today, I'm going to go ahead and do a file save as. Make sure I'm in my folder. I'm leaving it as a Photoshop document. If I switch it to a JPEG, these layers are gone and I'll have to start over next class. That's really bad. So make sure if it's a working project, it stays as a PSD. So it's Feral Review, PSD, I'm in my folder, I'm pressing Save. Yes, I want to replace it. And OK. And then next class when I come in, I can continue to work on my project. If you're done early, you can do a file new. And you can set it to inches, and it can be 8 inches by 8 inches at 72. You can name it Feral, because that's my last name, Feral, oh my goodness, and Fun File, and press OK. And then you can play around with some of these new tools that you've learned. So I can use the gradient here. I can make a new layer, right? I can use a paintbrush and I can start to make different images. Okay? And that's all that you need to do for the rest of the day today.